Now, welcome to Mining a Mountain Quick Lab. In uh, this lab, we're asking the question, is it possible to separate a mixture back into its original parts? Well, I guess it's a mixture of what? So I basically started by reminding us that we had uh, formed matter when we did modeling matter. We changed from a solid to a liquid to a gas and back to a liquid and a solid uh, in our cup on the floor in the room. And we said that matter is the substance that makes up everything. Well, if it makes up everything, then it must have mass, and it must take up space, and it must have properties. Those properties are physical properties. Uh, a, a description of its substance's characteristics, like is it a solid, a liquid, a gas? Is it white? Is it flexible? Is it soft? So it's a description of the thing. Uh, the other uh, way of describing matter is its chemical properties, the things in the atomic structure, the what it's made out of, and uh, it's much more uh, like, you know, for example, if you take water, water is a thing, but it's made out of hydrogens and oxygens. So physical properties describe the substance and chemical properties describe what the substance is. So the s mixture that I was talking about was a mixture of some water. I threw in a little bit of sand, some gravel, which are basically different sized rocks. I even threw in a, an, a pretty big sized rock as well. So I put in some rock. I threw in uh, some pure salt sodium chloride and we threw in some iron filings uh, which looked a lot like dark sand you couldn't really tell so the, all of these things got mixed up together in our mixture and I said so how many people could uh, separate these back and I gave you the opportunity to change your mind and uh, then we will started to go through I ask you to define what the physical properties and give examples from what I just showed you. And then we did the characteristics of salt. So physical characteristics of salt would be things like it um, was white. It was cubic. Uh, chemical properties was that it is uh, sodium, Na sodium. I'm messing up here. And Cl, sodium chloride. Sand was basically minerals because that's what rock is, is basically uh, different mixtures of minerals together. Iron is iron. Uh, water is basically H2O, minus the turtle part of it. And gravel, again, is a mixture of minerals. Uh, what we noticed was that uh, salt was white, um, but it was a solid. Sand was a solid, but it was made up of different sized particles, about the same size as salt and iron. Uh, so these were very similar. This one was white. These were sort of tan to brownish. These were blackish, grayish. Uh, this was obviously a liquid. And this one, again, was larger. So I started to say, okay, so if you had to start to think of these things as, as uh, what, what are the differences between these? And a lot of people right off the bat said, well, gravel is big, uh, relatively big, compared to the smaller sand and the salt and the iron. So these were small. And, uh, and so we went through the whole process. And basically I said, now think about this. What about these things in here didn't we think of? Well, one big one was that iron is magnetic. Sand you got, it was different sizes, and so it could be screened. Water is a liquid, so it would be easily evaporated, turned into uh, a gas, and then condensed back to a liquid. Uh, and the salt, because it's heavy, would remain here as the water evaporated and got caught on a colder surface. The, as we said, the iron could be picked out with a magnet, and the sand and the uh, 
and the dirt and the gravel could all be screened out or filtered out with the different size filters. So in the end, it was pretty darn possible, and we actually were able to do it pretty efficiently and pretty quickly. So yes, many mixtures can be separated out as long as you don't change the chemical characteristics. You only change the physical characteristics, like we got them wet and the salt dissolved, but it uh, came back together uh, when the water was evaporated. So overall this lab was worth 50 points, 10 overall points for having both the front and back done, uh, 20 points for that observation page that we just did, and 20 points answering this question, how do recycling companies separate the single stream recycling bins. So those blue bins over underneath, they are a mixture of paper, aluminum, plastic, and glass. So what characteristics of paper aluminum, plastic, and glass differentiate each one of those things uh, to allow it to be separated from the others. Glass is heavy and it breaks. Plastic is light, it's a solid, but it floats. Aluminum can be separated based on some of its metallic properties, or at least many of the tin cans and some of the other uh, magnetic uh, properties of it. Paper both floats and is very lightweight, so maybe we could blow it off. Um, but in any case, here's a quick video on the Science Channel that goes over that. Meet MRF. MRF is an acronym for a material recovery facility. This mammoth invention can tackle all 154 tons of recyclable materials it receives every day. It might look like garbage, but this MRF is cutting edge. It's equipped with technology that enables MRF to separate materials from a single stream. Single stream recycling is really um, a situation where we've taken sorting your recycled material in a um, controlled environment, uh, such as a recycling facility, is able to sort it automatically. So recycle your old multicolored bins, because being green has gotten even easier. Gets them in, in one large pile on it, what we call the tipping floor. From there, the tipping floor goes on to conveyors to various screens. So it first goes to a cardboard screen, and then from that it goes to another section where the newspaper is removed. And then the, the, the re remaining material is the containers. Aluminum cans, the tin cans, plastic bottles, glass bottles are gone through another sorting process where the glass is separated, the uh, tin is separated by magnets, and then the aluminum is separated by an eddy current, which is an eddy current actually causes the uh, aluminum cans to jump off the conveyor belt. An eddy current uses magnetic fields to separate the materials. We use centrifugal force, we use magnets, we use uh, gravity, all these things that are help us in the process of, of recycling the material and separating the material to, to make it uh, a, a commodity that's uh, acceptable to those businesses that need it for, to make their product. Once the material is completely separated, it's packed into dense bales ready to recycle. We recycle about 5.5 million tons of recycled material every year. Within that 5.5 million tons, we recycle enough paper to save 41 million trees. Next, how the science behind this seaweed can... So that is uh, the end. Thank you, and uh, good luck on your write-up.